that's exceeding in school. Maybe you're assigned a higher reading level than your classmates, or maybe you've heard the words genius or high potential thrown in your direction. Either way, you have some sort of preconceived notion about your intelligence and how well you should be performing. Eventually, you encounter setbacks in your education, and before you know it, you're falling down a slippery slope. Your grades drop, you lose motivation, and you ask yourself, what went wrong? You might be familiar with the term gifted kid burnout. This concept has been circling the internet for a while now, usually in the form of a humorous, self-deprecating meme. While it's generally regarded as a joke, the number of people that relate to gifted burnouts is concerning. In fact, the hashtag gifted kid burnout has over 152 million views on the social platform TikTok. This poses legitimate questions about the gifted program and our educational system as a whole. Why are gifted students, society's supposedly brightest minds, prone to burning out? Well, as a gifted student that was enrolled in a non-gifted program in elementary school and then transferred to a gifted program in high school, I've noticed that one of the biggest reasons for burnout is that toxic expectations placed on students. Growing up gifted, you're expected by your teachers, family, and peers to succeed. After all, you're supposed to be smart, right? Every year since first grade, my father has asked me the same question. Are you the smartest person in your class? I have always found that question to be ridiculous because of how vague the word smart was. Amy could be the fastest at answering math questions, but Mark wrote exceptional reading responses, and Ella was good at solving crossword puzzles. These are all fake names, of course. Deep down, I knew my dad was only looking for one answer to that question. He wanted me to say that I was the smartest one in my class. His justification was that I was gifted, so I should have been smarter than my peers. This was when I was enrolled in the non-gifted program. Growing up, these expectations warped my views on intelligence. I felt pressured to be the best at almost everything I did, from academics to visual arts, and even silly things like Mario Kart. I was afraid that if I were to fall short of these standards, people would be disappointed in me and no longer see me as someone worthy of praise. My gifted identity had become a mask, and I desperately didn't want anyone to realize that I wasn't as smart as I should have been. It turns out my experience was more common than you may think. There's a study conducted by Professor Joan Freeman, a British psychologist on the long-term impact of giftedness. The study, which began in 1974 and lasted for over three decades, compared the lives of labeled and unlabeled gifted children, as well as non-gifted children. They accomplished this by matching children from each category, by their age, sex, and socioeconomic status, and evaluating them based on a variety of tests, including IQ, personality, behavior, as well as conducting interviews with the children's parents and teachers. Her findings suggested that labeled gifted children were usually treated differently by their parents and teachers and suffered from more emotional problems and higher academic expectations compared to non-labeled but equally gifted children. The simple key word gifted pressured children to succeed academically to the point where it had negatively affected themselves. It turns out many of them had something called a fixed mindset. The fixed mindset, which is coined by psychologist Carol Dweck, means that you believe your, your intelligence and ta talents are unchangeable. This usually manifests in the form of avoiding challenges and fear of failure, viewing feedback as criticism, giving up easily, and wanting to appear smart. For me, my fixed mindset resulted in me rarely asking questions in class and fear of being perceived as stupid. When encountering a setback, a student with a fixed mindset might give up 
believing that they aren't smart enough. Children who suffer from achievement-oriented labels, such as gifted or talented, tend to believe that their intelligence is innate and static, rather than something that can be developed. When they encounter difficulties, their fear of being unable to reach such high expectations resulted in many of them settling for underperforming. This explains why someone who might have been at the top of the class during their youth would stop challenging themselves and end up in a modest career. Of course, these shared experiences aren't just limited to gifted students, but to children who suffer from overly high expectations and toxic labels. Cough, cough, my fellow Asians. One may attribute this phenomenon to our education system. At some point during our education, the focus shifts from learning to grades. We begin to determine our own self-worth based on some numbers rather than the actual learning. To combat fixed mindsets, Dweck suggests that people should develop a growth mindset. Growth mindsets view intelligence and talents as something that can be improved on over time. People with these mindsets can learn from failure and willingly embrace challenges, whereas someone with a fixed mindset might shrink away from difficulties. Of course, developing a growth mindset is easier said than done. I believe that everyone possesses qualities of a fixed mindset to some degree at a certain point in their life. Although I try my best to apply a growth mindset in my life, there are several instances where I relapse into my fixed mindset behavior. For example, a certain trigonometry test during the first semester. Like most people, when faced with a poor grade, I felt extremely discouraged and upset at my own capabilities. Adopting and maintaining a growth mindset isn't always sunshine and sparkles. It's not always feasible to just shrug off your insecurities and put on a happy face. What you can tackle is doing the little things every day, such as choosing to approach a challenge with a positive outlook, reminding yourself that failure is part of the process, and stepping out of your comfort zone. If our education system were to promote a growth mindset, instead of mindlessly praising children as geniuses or talented, we could allow students to flourish and prevent the path of burnout. After all, it is not the person labeled as gifted in their youth who becomes successful, but rather the person who actively seeks opportunities and remains resilient in the face of adversity. Thank you.